Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. My name is Zach, otherwise known as Poppy Syntax, and today has been quite a long day. <laughs> quite busy at work, uh, successful but busy, and then this afternoon, instead of coming directly home to play a, a, a wonderful video game and get a React done for you, um, I instead decided to hang about in the city for far too long, get way too much sun, and have a lovely ginger beer, which turned into like three hours of conversation with a good friend of mine. Oh well, <laughs> we're here now. Um, you may also notice a lovely addition to the back if you'd like to, to see this. Well, you don't even get to see the setup. If you'd like a behind the scenes, <laughs> feel free to check out my vlog where I put that glittered monstrosity up. Uh, today we will be reacting, well tonight, we will be reacting to uh, Amberlynn Reed's Vlogmas Day 7? 8? I can't remember. Uh, entitled Opening Up and Shower With Me. Now, thank you all so much in the audience who uh, have advised me that this is a little bit of a challenging video. I did manage to kind of skim through it and analyze a little bit before going into this and just running my mouth. So thank you again to everyone who warned me. Um, but with all of that being said, let's get into the video. As always, we're sped up to 1.25 times speed and here we go. Hey guys, so hey, welcome to Vlogmas, I think day eight. Sure. Is Linmas cheesy? Probably, I don't know. Yes. So I'm actually in the and middle of doing my makeup. Um, I had a appointment through video with my psychiatrist today. I didn't really want to speak on this because some things are left better as like a personal thing. Okay, so we're going to preface this whole conversation with I am not a mental or physical health professional. I am simply an audience member of Amberlynn, right? I, I'm not coming at this from any level of education or professionalism. However, what Amber chooses to film, to vlog, to put out there in the world, and my gaze is primarily on YouTube, so... This could also branch out into conversations about what she used to put up on you now and Snapchat and Instagram Live and now TikTok and all of those things. What she chooses to film, record, edit, and then release is entirely within her power to control. Right? Now, I understand it's a really, really poor form thing for me to do to sit here and say, Amber, you use your mental health as an excuse for your behavior. I understand that that's n not an, a kind thing to say. And the reason why I think that way as an audience member is because she doesn't show growth or success or management. Zero, zero form of self-care, really. If you think about it, what you see... Amber filming day to day, where is the self-care? Where is the awareness that, oh, I'm not, I need to look after myself? Like she says the things, but the actions and the doing and the follow through, that's where she loses us pretty heavily. Um, now, I understand in this video, she is going to talk about her mental health and I might have things to say that people disagree with. And that's fine. We all come at this from a different perspective. I have not had diagnosed mental illness. I I don't suffer from anxiety or depression disorders. I don't... That, that's not where I'm coming at this from. I'm coming at this from <laughs> an audience perspective, trying to understand the truth of the matter, right? We're trying to understand the objective truth, and Amber is showing us her subjective truth and what she wants to show. So that's a long preamble and apology if I put my foot in my mouth in terms of something I don't know about. It's opinion. But this is so much on my mind and just a huge part of my life right now. Don't want to cry. Already upset. Someone no told me that to the Becca Foundation Sorry. is actually I'm not discontinued. Here. That is not why I'm on the verge of tears. That just doesn't make matters better. So I take two medications one for anxiety and one for mood stabilization because I am bipolar. So I've been taking the same milligram of my 
uh, mood stabilizer for over a year now. I also have been taking mm -hmm. the same milligram of my antidepressant, not my antidepressant. I mean, it is an antidepressant, but it's not, f like she didn't give it to me for depression. Um, my psychiatrist gave it to me for my anxiety. She said that this one actually helps people with their- Forgive me for my ignorance, but from my general understanding, anxiety and depression kind of work within the same uh, sector, <laughs> sphere, I don't know. They, they have a lot to do with each other in the human brain. Um, so if you're taking a medication designed to treat elements of anxiety and or depression, I imagine there may be similarities that you could benefit from those medications under. Anxiety as well, so that's why I so don't I'm just going to call it an antidepressant because assumptions. that is what it is labeled under. So I've been taking the same milligram of that um, same dose as okay. well, but that's been for like about, I want to say half of So just so we're clear, as I understand it, she's been taking a mood stabilizer for over a year at the same dosage. A year, more than half of a year, probably like seven, eight months. And she's been taking an antidepressant for seven to eight months. Again, consistent dosage. Right. And I actually also, I wish I could have done my makeup as good as Amber. <laughs> Someone called me out being like, well, it seems like seems like Amber can do something better than you. And I was like, I, it's fine. <laughs> like I, I I don't plan to be the world champion at uh, at, at um eyeshadow application, but Thanks for watching. <laughs> actually ran out of the antidepressant over two weeks ago. And this is not something I wanted to like talk about, but it has definitely, it's, it's been hard. Yeah. So as I can only really relate to this in terms of like, a, um, a, just general medical knowledge. Um, you don't just stop taking the medication, right? You don't, you don't just like s stop if it's particularly, I guess, with mental health, it's consistent because you're playing with things like hormones and brain chemistry of all things, which is, you know, frightening to think about, but interesting at the same time. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I quit smoking um, quite a while ago and I was on a drug called Champix, which alters your brain chemistry to then alter both your the addictive substance of nicotine as well as the flavor in your mouth. So it's real bonkers. Um, very useful and highly recommended from my experiences. Um, but understanding that that in, even in that situation, my doctor was like, okay, great. So when you start to wean yourself off, this is how you do it. And you check in with me and like, you don't just stop cold, cold turkey because that's essentially what she's saying. She hasn't taken a medicine for over two weeks that directly impacts the way her brain functions. Again, layman's audience perspective. That seems dangerous. And I wasn't able to get any more of it, obviously, until I had my appointment with my psychiatrist, which is, you know, how it goes because I hadn't actually seen her for six months because I was doing so well. But Okay, I caught this a little earlier, and I thought I had a good point, but I do need a historian to assist me here. Amber has said she hasn't met with her therapist, uh, her psychiatrist, she was saying, sorry, not therapist, for over six months. And this is presumably the same mental health professional who has diagnosed and organized and prescribed her this medication, right? Because she's telling this story all at the same time. She hasn't met this individual for over six months. And understandably, COVID's happening. So people are busy and meetings happen in a different capacity. But like a Zoom call or a phone call or nothing like that. So that has brought us to this situation of I can't get a refill on my script because the script probably only lasted for five, six refills. Whatever. We don't know. I'm making assumptions here. She had a hysterectomy four to five months ago. From my understanding, a hysterectomy is going to play havoc with your hormones, which in turn would play havoc with your brain chemistry, 
like neurohormones. That's a th that's a thing, right? Anyway, you'd think after major surgery that directly impacts a lot of how your body functions, so much so that you need to balance out your estrogen slash testosterone, you would think you would need to meet with the person who is prescribing you mental health medication to update them and say, oh, hey, I went in for this major surgery. Like, what are your thoughts? Maybe we'll need to decrease dosage. Maybe we'll need to increase it. I don't know. But this comment really got me. It was like, I hope you told them. I hope you told your therapist, psychologist, whatever it is, that this was the plan. And I hope my timeline's off. Because if she'd been taking the same dosage, but her body needed more and or less, or perhaps a different thing, isn't that a cause for concern? And this loops back around to where is the self-care, Amber? There, there is none. And I can't continue to just call, just think about it as laziness, right? Just to call it laziness. It's, it's complete dissociation between the functions of your body and your personality, your mind. We won't call it brain because that's different. It is, it is frightening to, to be that ignorant of all of the problems going on and how they can affect each other to just kind of ultimately end up with, well, my script ran out. Did I refill it? No. I just stopped taking the medication that, you know, affects the way I think. It just seems, it seems dangerous. Something about the timeline and when my medication ran out didn't add up, obviously. So without the um, antidepressant, I have been extremely emotional. I have been irritable. I cry every day. Lots of anxiety. <laughs> like about- Wait, editing for that. That's, that's the thing. Literally everything. I was watching Gabby Hanna's, um, one of her vlogmases. I mean, I don't know if you consider her vlogmas, but she did start uploading for vlogmas on her new channel. And I was bawling my eyes out. And I just don't, like- I Let me know if I should look at Gabby Hanna. I'm not really a big fan of hers. I've seen some of her music videos. I know her poetry is not good. I don't know, she just seems very, um, apparent. <laughs> I don't want to be rude and say she seems very loud. She doesn't seem particularly loud. She just seems very there. <laughs> I just don't know why, like... Oh no. I don't know, like, I literally cry at everything now. And when I was on the other medication, I didn't... I didn't cry like this. I cried when I was supposed to cry, you know, like... What, def what defines supposed to cry? I don't know. I have I have moments where I like reflect on things and get like upset and and have those sad emotions and admittedly cry. Um, I, I, but I think that that that's very subjective. That's a thing that's for everyone. Again, I don't know when it comes to bipolar disorder. Uh, bipolar. A I don't know when it comes to a bipolar diagnosis, what that looks like, um, but I don't know. Normal crying moments. And without it, I just have been so sad. And so not only am I- Do you know what's interesting here as well? I'm just remembering that video that she did where people were calling her out saying, well, we don't think you had cancer, which is an awful thing to think, right? We don't think you had cancer. Um, here, here's the reasons why. And then she did a really short video where she came on and she showed her medical, um, like bills or diagnosis or whatever it was. That is interesting because her her cancer. Sto I don't want to call it a storyline. That's awful. Um, the the content. Here we go. The content that was surrounding that cancer, right? was quite short. It was all very quick. But the mental health of it all has, from my understanding, been years and years. At least two years worth of content that I can, like, think of from the culmination of, <laughs> of 
Anne Boleyn Reed that I've been consuming over 2020. So it is interesting that she's never gone, well, here's my medication and here's what my doctor said. And I understand that's all private. That's, you don't have to do that. Um, I just think that considering the physical health element of it and how, how she responded to her audience basically questioning that, she doesn't seem to give the same credence to her mental health capacities. I'm not making any assumptions here. I'm just pointing out what I'm thinking. Finally getting that medicine back. I'm also getting my mood stabilizer increased, which I haven't needed it increased in over a year. So that also makes me very emotional because it's like, I thought I was doing good, you know? Like I'm sure people with mental health problems totally understand the whole, oh, I'm getting bad again. Like it's such a horrible feeling and I try so hard to, I'm literally doing my makeup. <laughs> I try so hard to have a smile. Oh, I need to stop crying, hold on. Oh boy, a tear rolling down my cheek after I've done my foundation. Cute. And I also talked I to her, you know, more about me being afraid of sleep when I try to sleep um, early. I can't explain it. And it's like, it's, it's hard to explain on a platform that doesn't want you to talk about these things. It's trauma. That's what she told me. And that's what is always told to me is that it's trauma. And it's like, I know this, but it's like, a lot of people are. Did she... Did she give you anything to assist with that? Was there a discussion of therapy? I always get confused between psychi psychiatrists, psychologists, and therapists. I'm not a super smart individual. <laughs> but okay. Constantly telling I me, hope there was a discussion you know, of how to address that. You need to see a therapist to, to specifically talk about trauma. Manage the trauma. Like, I'm scared. It's not just you know, a choice that I can just be like, yep, let's go do this. No, this is bigger than how it seems online. There's more than I've shared online. There's more that I don't even know that I've suppressed and that I just don't understand about my past and, ah. <sighs> okay, that was a lot. Um, that's probably one of the trickiest things to talk about and and to handle and it is it's really hard to watch this and see another human being upset talking about this stuff right but i feel slightly manipulated watching this as a critical member of the audience i feel manipulated really sorry for this <laughs> I just needed to talk, you know? Sometimes you just need to talk. And if you're a YouTuber, you totes understand that sometimes talking to your camera, knowing that there's people who are listening, it just feels so good. I imagine what would feel better is speaking to a therapist. And I don't know how many times we can say it, as reactors, I don't know how many times your audience can say it as your audience. And I understand what she's saying, that it is uncomfortable to meet with a stranger, to sit down and to lay out all your problems in front of them. And it's much easier just to ignore it all and push it all aside and just pretend everything's fine. I understand that is the easy route. But again, we circle back to self-care. And that is ignoring your problems is not it, sis. It's just not. And you can't say, well, my problems are so bad. My problems that I am recognize are so bad that I can't act on them. You have a partner who lives with you and you have the monetary means to do whatever the hell you want. That's all. I don't want to bring Becky into this and question her intent in the relationship. But I feel like if you had a loving partner who saw you suffering with these things, they may need to they may need to one day step in and say, Okay, we're gonna go see the doctor now. But I don't think Becky will. So I know probably too look at this gray hair, I'm about to pull it out. 
wow, I'm getting so old. And I, know, I hate to say it, I don't, I don't believe this act. I just don't. I feel like over the last couple of months doing reacts, I'm, I'm burnt out on these arguments of it's too hard, I can't do it. If you can't do it, stop talking about it. Stop it. If you can't do it, get off YouTube. Because it's clear that you've substituted mental health professional assistance with talking to a camera. And that's, that's it. To viewers who have never done YouTube before probably look at me and they're, they're just like, okay, why are you telling the internet this? It's Vlogmas, it's Linmas. I am just, I want you guys to see more into emotionally and mentally what I'm currently dealing with because it's, it's just a lot and there's just a lot going on. We don't need to as audience members. And it feels like you're, you're using your mental health for content. Which in some, like, if we're talking about other YouTubers, in educational capacities, in slice of life capacities, in, even in vlogs, sure, I get it. The problem is, Amber has a history of utilizing this content to make her audience feel a certain way. Like, things that I <laughs> want to just scream out to the world and just be like, this is me, this is my life, this is what I'm going through. These are the things that are haunting me every day, but it's like, I just can't. I feel like a really good person who you could have those conversations with would be a therapist. You can have those conversations with friends, you can have them with family. Do you wanna have the conversation with your audience of 180,000 people? Maybe not after trying to have that conversation for years on end and being called out for the immediate changes in uh, in your character, depending on what the circumstances are. Okay. Thank you for listening. This was an intro from hell. I want my vlogmas to be a place that you guys can escape to and feel good. Um, but sometimes this is Didn't just feel good. the way the wind blows. <laughs> All right, you guys, so there are a couple of gifts that I actually ordered a few weeks ago that finally came in the last couple of days. I feel like sometimes Amber's content is hypnotic, right? Sometimes, and again, not a smart individual, but sometimes I feel like I'll watch something and five minutes later, I'll have completely forgotten what was being said, what the content was and what the tone was. Now, I think here there's been a slight mistake because we've gone from the tone of the earlier conversation talking about her mental health, quite substantially, a quite deep conversation. And now we're going to move into a haul in the same video with no bridge to gap this. Mm. So I'm gonna go wrap those for Becky. Shh. Becky's not here right now. And I got her a couple extra gifts for the 25th. She thinks she's only getting one. Her birthday's also on the 11th, and she thinks she's only getting one. What time is it she outside? Some surprises, guys? man. Some surprises. So this like is a huge box underneath here. So 10 p.m., 11 p.m. This is gonna be interesting. <laughs> I am not good at wrapping. Oh, me neither, I'm awful. Okay. Um, gotta be honest, <sighs> I wouldn't even say that I truly try. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great, we're not trying with our health and we're not trying with wrapping gifts. Um, <laughs> I, I'm really bad at, at wrapping. I think there's something wrong with the way I perceive like spatial awareness with paper because even when I'm doing printing jobs at work, I'll forget like how things flip <laughs> and like where things go when that happens. Um, so wrapping is not it for me. Uh, the last time I tried was a real like, the ugliest effort but at least it was even there were clean lines and edges there was just a little bit of extra wrapping paper kind of folded up to one too many times <laughs> underneath <laughs> this ain't gonna work you know what i've seen some people just wrap the top of big boxes but that's kind of like ugl why you ain't got I have never seen ugly. That. Yeah, yeah, you ugly. me when i look in the mirror like 
I'm so confused. <laughs> ah! All right, we are making progress. So do you guys like to wrap gifts? I know some people love it. It just, not me. It just, That's why she's, it just seems to be doing it in a weird way, right? right? I decided just for put each it, other. Put Grab it under me. and then just, <laughs> you do the thing. What was on? If you guys saw. This is bizarre. <laughs> what was going on? So I don't know if I should put this under the tree. You might notice, but it's kind of big. Or if I should just like hide it in my closet. I don't know. Oh boy. Y'all. <laughs> oh my God. Loki might give up. Where's the tape? What? Uh oh, there it is. This looks like an actual three-year-old did it. You're either a good rapper or you're not. And Manette. As someone who is a YouTuber, you know what would have been useful here? Get on your computer, look at a tutorial on how to do a simple wrapping, and then follow the tutorial. I've literally done that <laughs> within the last 12 months. But no. Is a good rapper. Well, I mean, it's not too bad. Now I have another one I have to go wrap. For the other one, I'm gonna use this. But I'm gonna wrap that one in private because there's no like box or anything. It's a secret. I feel like I hid the big end pretty well. Right there. I don't sure. think that she's gonna notice, but I could be wrong. <laughs> She does a lot of her sitting over there. So it's like, I don't think she'll see that. Like you could barely see it. Peekaboo. As for the other one I wrapped, it's way under the tree. It blends with all these. So I think we're good. Becky just got home and she mm -hmm. came up to me and said, she got me something. I did. And I said, can I vlog Becky it? Um, it is actually the last one I had too. So I'm gonna close my eyes. Yeah, close your eyes. Okay, my eyes are closed. Is it gonna be cold? No. Grab it. Oh my God, it's a figure set. Oh my god, it's an advent calendar. <gasps> Babe, no you didn't. Becky, re oh my god, this is crazy. Where'd you, right. you, <laughs> you guys, okay. Story time. So I'm this person who likes weird, you know, little doodads and just, I don't know. I. She also likes earrings and I'm just now noticing this is not a pair of one of Becky's gifts. Very good. Pokemon cards, Magic the Gathering, little figurines. Just like, I like random things like that. And Becky's like, I'm surprised you've never heard of Garbage Pail Kids. Like she said this like a month ago. And I was like, what the heck is a Garbage Pail Kid? So I immediately looked it up online and I was like, oh my God. And like, she can look up a pop culture reference. She can't look up a video on how to wrap a box. Ooh. All the cards. I was like, oh my God, that's so cool. And then she finds this. It's like it was meant to be. Yeah. How does this work? It was the last one. It's an advent calendar. It's 25 collectible acrylic figures. So today's day eight. Oh, it's been open. Y'all. I know that. It looks like a cereal box. So when I first saw it, I was like, cereal. It's an avocado. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, because novelty, novelty cereal tends to be disgusting. Yeah. The reptar cereal you bought me. Yes. Before. So I'm not going to do day eight until we do our gifts. Okay. But I'm going to do. Just nice. more junk to I'm going to do um, seven of them. How does this work? It's an advent calendar, Amber. Okay, you have to show this to me. What? Okay, first of all, don't know what this is. Why do I? Why am I singing everything? What is it? What does it say? It's like hard. I think it's like uh, where you can um, like display them. Maybe. It says 25 days of collectible garbage first edition. This is so cool. Look. <laughs> why am I so excited? I'm like, oh, that's fangirling over what? Yeah. All right. This so the first plastic. one. Oh my God, this is so cool. Literally. Fry and Ryan. Can I see it? Or is my fat fingers in the way? How do we do this? Yeah, that's cool. I think we're just gonna Second let one. this run, guys. Nasty Nick. That's cool. Maybe I can think of better names. Oh my God. I want every Nick. single one of these ever now. Mm. These are so cute. Leaky. Mm. <laughs> <Lindsay>. <laughs> Uh, oh my god. Becky did have an advent calendar. It was socks, but she opened them all no. one day. I did. <laughs> Sorry guys, brain's not working today. That was long before <laughs> December even happened. It was yeah. like the middle of November. That's scary. Patty putty. 
yikes. Okay. Fifth one. Ew. Do you remember how this video started? The tone has shifted. Uh, I don't know why that's giving me the heebies. I, I can't look at stuff like that without... Ew. Acne Amy. If you have like trypophobia or something, don't look. I thought it was going to be like maggot Maggie or something. Stop. Like Worst fear ever. Day six. Maggots? Why is that one kind of cute? Oh. I low-key like this one. Cracked Jack. <laughs> this is the last one for right now. Day seven. I wish that they had a 365 day advent calendar. You know what she, she could do with them? Put a like a stud on the back of it and make some cute earrings. I don't know if she has enough earrings. That'd Every day I go. Rainy Brian. <laughs> babe, I love this. Best thing I've ever seen in my life. Thank you. I'm glad you like it, babe. <laughs> so I just got these pantry organizers in the mail today. I got them from Amazon, but I'm gonna oh, use good. them in the fridge. I'm gonna show you guys, cause obviously I clean stuff before I actually use it. This is an actual Leaning Tower of Pisa. Do you guys ever have to do that when you do your dishes? Okay, so I've been trying to read the comments a little bit more because I think I asked you guys about one question per vlog. Like, I think the question I asked yesterday was something about makeup, I feel like. I don't know. So I try to just, like, go through and see the comments. Plus, I like to see what you guys want to see more of I or what you want to see less of. Just to see what you guys are vibing <laughs> with with the vlogs versus what you aren't vibing with. And I got a comment that said... Those Lego sets can cost a few hundred each and she mm -hmm. throws it in a box. What's the point of buying and building them if you don't display them? Yeah. And I really wanted to answer that. this question for you guys. A lot of people are calling me wasteful. And the thing is, I don't like displaying Legos. Like, that's not like my look or how I like things to look in my living room or my bedroom. Aesthetic. Plus, I would have yeah, nowhere to it. display. Plus, it would just be, it just, it's not my style to have a bunch of Legos on display. I buy the Legos and build them because I like doing that part of it. So it just kind of sucks that like, that is a hobby that is very pricey. I don't mean mm -hmm. to be wasteful with them at all in any sort of way. And I also saw another comment earlier. I don't know where it went. So what do you want to do about that? Nothing? I get it. Everyone can live your, live your Lego making dreams and put it in a box. Ultimately, it doesn't matter. However, in the last video, you literally said, oh, well, you know, I'm going to be doing all of this stuff for charity and I just don't show it off because people question it. It's like, well, okay. You could literally just say, I put it together and that's the fun part and then I give it away. Like that, I think that's the point a lot of people were making in the comments. But saying that me buying Legos means I'm very irresponsible with my money. I think that's silly. Oh. I just have hobbies and Legos for me has been therapeutic. I've been having a lot of anxiety lately. That's what. Do you know what else is therapeutic? Seeing a therapist. You know, I talked to you guys about earlier and every single time I sit down and build a Lego, I feel calm. And I want to do more things that make me feel calm instead of eating. Because normally, you know, when I'm feeling a certain type of way that I don't want to feel, I usually stuff my face with food instead because that takes away the negative feelings that I'm having. It's great that she recognizes that as an issue. What are you, do what are you doing about it, Amber? Recognizing the problem is half the battle. You, you, it's quite evident that you know the things that you are struggling with, but you do nothing to address them at all and you film it as well which is the like the wild part right if she were doing this in the privacy of her own home and many people do i i was i'm not very quiet about my eating habits when i was my biggest but it was being done in the privacy of my own home i would never eat like that in public or at work or anything it was always at home safely locked away inside my room essentially a secret eater but to have this amount of clarity for knowing what you do poorly i guess and doing absolutely nothing about it and talking about it all the time that's what it is for me but legos do that for me i don't know what it is it's just like someone who really likes art or someone who likes to listen to music i adore music so don't get me wrong but legos has become my new like 
just that therapy of it. And I don't want to collect them afterwards. It would be too cluttery. It's just not my thing. Why am I going on about Legos? Ugh. I just wanted to like answer that because, you know, I share things within my life. You know, I open you guys to my home and all that stuff. And if I notice I'm getting hundreds of comments based on one subject, I want to just like talk about it a little bit more. I'm not going to stop building Legos. And I just know that after I build, I need to do something with them that is productive. It's just throwing them in a, in a box for me right now is the most productive thing I can do because it's like, I don't want them just laying around the house, you know? All right. So pack them up and give them away. Like what, what use is something sitting in a box? You can say, yeah, I'll come back to it in six months time and build that Lego set again. That's fine. I just don't think she would have the intent for that. And she's not communicated that intent either. Again, it's her money. I'm not telling her how to spend it. I just think that it's pointless to buy a thing to just hide it away. That's just me. Okay, so it is time for day eight gifts. And I mean, I guess I could have done this these. earlier. You could have. Do you want to do it, babe? Sure, I'll do it for you. Oh. Why? He looks cool. His name is Split Kit. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is cool. Yeah, he's cute. Day eight gifts for Amberlynn. Woo woo. All right. <laughs> Little macaroons. Macrons. <laughs> Whatever you want to call macarons. them. Macarons. Macarons. Oh my gosh, look how cute. They're you delightful. Like Yes, they're super cute. She'll never wear I them. I love them. I love the colors. I love how small they are. I love them. Love them, love them, love them. That would look cute with that multicolor right, go fetch you. cardigan go fetch she got you a from gift. Hot Topic yesterday. Okay Wait, how'd you know? That she didn't wear it. eight? It's been sitting here the whole time. You cheated. No. <laughs> now I think eagle eye viewers will look out for the wrapping of the smaller gifts under the tree to see whether or not Amber and her ability to wrap, um, maybe that... That story's not matching up. Maybe Becky wrapped her in gifts. I don't These know. These things is another shirt. <laughs> oh, by God, it is. <laughs> it's a shirt. Oh. Do you like that one? Yes, even though Squidward hates her guts. Bros. I, it looks oh. like he's being held against his will. I love it. I baby. preferred the other Patrick's shirt. I think that piece. design was great. He should have been me. the main focus, though. I know, right? Patrick's the best. <laughs> Do you like it? Yes, I love it. Babe. I swear I thought you had that one, so it like scared me. Then yep. where have I seen that at then? I've seen that somewhere. I have no idea, girl. But I ain't got it. Now you do. Don't worry, I got your size boo-boo. <laughs> so it is the end of the night and I'm getting ready to take a shower. My routine for that is as simple as they get. Oh, this is this is teased in the title as well. Shower with me. Ooh. Sorry. <laughs> For those of you who aren't watching my vlogs, uh, I try to get a YouTube appropriate shower scene every morning. <laughs> Got your makeup. I brush my hair before I get in the shower because I do not brush it while it's wet. So I brush. I don't brush mine at all. So at then, the while I am in the shower, um, it won't get as naughty. You know what I'm saying? Because I know from experience that going in the shower with already not- Also, I've been staring at this outfit for a little while and it's confusing me. It's giving me full, like, football jersey to the mid-arm and then leopard print, which I live for. <laughs> um, and it also, I don't know if it's inside out or not because there's a really ugly- overlock seam that kind of runs from the shoulder join hair and then like putting shampoo in it and, like, to the neck Do you see that? like the that. armpit to the neck see that massive ugly overlock line that doesn't seem like it should be there it's just not a cute look and it goes all the way down the front panel this outfit i love elements of it for sure i just don't think it's a very cohesive pattern to go together <laughs> after you get out of the shower so once my hair is all brushed, not only is that an amazing feeling, ever since I cut my hair, I don't get half as near as much knots as I used to have in my hair. Yeah, you cut so half of it off, so. I take off my makeup, makeup free. 
So once that is done and I'm looking like a fetus, my next step that I like to do is I usually get naked, but this is not only fans. So I'm wearing a bra for this. I then brush my teeth, best toothpaste ever, Sensodyne, Pro Namel, and then Gentle Whitening. And I have to brush my teeth before I shower. It's like a weird little thing. So let's go. So the shampoo and conditioner I use, this stuff right here. The yellow herbal essence, get it? It's amazing. Body soap, I use a simple. I use a lush shampoo bar. I can't remember what it's called. It's got like pineapple in it. It's really nice. Bar of Dial, it does the best for my skin. I never seem to get too dry from it or break out. My skin is super sensitive, you guys know that. I use a tea tree oil based body scrub and a natural sponge. Helps to scrub a dub dub. All right. Let's make it hot and I'll see you when I'm out of the shower. Five, four, three, two, one. So I am out of the shower and I always gotta make sure to have my house slippers because- Oh, these are the gold ones. <laughs> we like these. I personally don't like walking around with wet feet. I mean, they're dry, but you know, they're clean. I have nowhere to set you guys, but next, deodorant. I am using Water Lily by Secret. Lotion. Deodorant after shower? Wait, what? <laughs> this might be just like the ignorant boy Zach talking. <laughs> I put I put I put deodorant on after and antiperspirant after shower when I go to work, like on my before I go to work, but not before I get in bed, because you're just gonna sweat in your sleep anyway. So I have two showers a day, morning and evening. Champagne toast by Bath and Body Works and the body oh, spray body. of the same champagne toast. This smells so good, you guys. 10 out of 10, recommend. So I've had my towel on for about, I don't know, a little over 30 minutes. That's usually how long I leave it on. And now I'm gonna cuddle with this little child right here. Oh. Oh, I hope Twinkie didn't get baby. sick after yesterday. She napping. So I think it's time to end the vlog. I hope that you guys did enjoy it and I will s Audience much? Sorry, I'll space out. I love you. I hope that you guys enjoyed this vlog and I will see you in the next one, bye. Bye, Amber. Well, you're all right. <laughs> that was a really, um, a really tricky one to, to talk about. I just, I don't, I don't understand. And so many, like the timelines are not matching up and the discussions about diagnosis aren't matching up and things just the tone of it all, right? Again, I'm bringing it back to the layman audience perspective. To have that conversation front loaded in the video and then to shift the tone so dramatically, it, uh, it just doesn't seem good. <laughs> I don't have a lot of words for it. Um, feel free to comment down below. I'm, I'm absolutely sure I'll jump in on the discussions. Um, and please know that everything that, that I say doesn't come from a professional or learned background. Once again, uh, if you got to this point in the video, thank you so much. As always, I appreciate your comments, opinions, and eyeballs, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.